Okay, so we're up. So the first thing to do is just install the uh, RPM in the normal fashion. Okay, here it is on Linux. And you get this from our website, and then you move the uh, license file uh, into place, okay, which you also uh, just get in an email. Uh, then you enter the config file. Again, you really don't have to do this step, but here we're just uh, enabling the uh, SSH-based uh, CLI in time beat, okay, so we can... Uh, SSH the time read as it's running and just uh, look at various things and we'll have a look. You see username and password and now we're going to configure a PTP source. Okay, so this is what the default config looks like. Uh, here Ian is uh, just changing uh, the interface. You can see it's in domain zero. Uh, and that's it. Now he's starting at time beat, and that is literally how easy it is to configure and install time beat. So uh, we now SSH to the CLI, and then we just verify that we can in fact uh, see the pair that uh, we configured, and we can. You can see we have an error source. We can see how many transactions and so on. And now you can see that we're recording offsets uh, for a particular thing. And that brings us to the back end, okay? And uh, here Ian is just cut and pasting from uh, our support website a few commands. He starts up by installing uh, Snap, okay? Which we're gonna use to spin up uh, uh, Micro uh, K8S, okay? Uh, which he uh, is now installing, okay? Uh, and okay, it takes some download. Uh, we have only 100 megabits uh, connection, so it takes a little while. Uh, but you get the general idea. So this will spin up uh, a whole Kubernetes environment uh, uh, on a single PC. And that is almost done now. Yeah, there we go. That's it. And then um, there's a few services which uh, it's uh, useful to sort of uh, also spin up uh, in the Kubernetes environment, okay? Uh, here we're enable, uh, enabling DNS, okay, and this just allows uh, different containers to speak with each other based on uh, host names, okay, which is handy. And then um, host path storage, uh, again, it's a Kubernetes thing here. We're just uh, enabling uh, persistent uh, storage in Kubernetes. And now Helm, okay, uh, which is uh, useful uh, just to get uh, the specific Helm chart for time beat. Uh, there, Ian uh, installed a load balancer, which allows um, uh, access to this externally. And now he installed uh, a home chart uh, repo, uh, uh, and then he got the time beat home chart. Again, this is all just cut and paste from the support website. Uh, we can see now that uh, we've spun up uh, the entire Kubernetes system. Okay, it literally is this fast to do. All of these commands are just cut and paste, and we can see that uh, Grafana is running, Kibana is running, Elasticsearch is running along with the load balancers that allow access to these, um, etc. So now Ian is just adding uh, the Elastic host uh, in the time beat uh, configuration file and hence just the uh, IP of the uh, host name. Then he's restarting time beat uh, and uh, just uh, showing himself uh, that all of the images uh, that are relevant uh, to this have been pulled from the various sources, including the TimeBeat repo on GitHub. Uh, and you can now see him trying to access uh, the TimeBeat front end in the browser on the right hand side. Okay. And uh, you can see it says uh, container uh, creating, which means that it's actually spinning this up. And in a second, uh, so now everything has switched to running, which means he'll not be uh, successful in connecting to it. Let's see, he's, he's furiously hitting, uh, hitting refresh. <laughs> yeah, okay, we tried to do it as quickly as we could here, right? And he's mistyping a few things. And there we go. Uh, this is uh, the time bit version of Grafana that has now spun up. We can see that the host, which is reporting, uh, is there. And we can see that it's indeed in the single-digit nanosecond range. And that is all there is to it.